Slog FPV. This is another one of my abbreviated builds with a review. So you may ask, Slog, you should fly more and build less. And yes, you would have a good argument. I think over the past couple of years, bind and fly freestyle quads have come a long way, um, especially um, from some of the more major manufacturers like FRC and iFlight and so on. Uh, there's a, a, a quite a numerous list of good flying quads that actually are a great value. But I still think you can build a better freestyle quad, but it will cost you, uh, especially with the chip shortages that are happening right now. But for me, half the fun of the hobby is building and then flying a quad, and I get a lot of satisfaction from that. Then also, I like testing new and improved technologies that are in this hobby. So with that, let's go ahead and talk about the build I'm going to be doing today. It's really based off of a frame that was designed by Chris Rosser, uh, who is an aerothermal engineer. I guess he specializes in computational modeling, and he brings this uh, domain knowledge to bear on creating a very unique frame design. And I quote, quote from Chris's website, the AOS 5 uses a scientific approach to take high performance five inch freestyle frames to the next level designed from the ground up based on a combination of finite element simulation and real world flight testing. This frame boasts excellent vibration and resonance performance. So that's a lot of words, but um, I think Chris does an excellent job of explaining the physics behind the design of his frame in a way that is very easy to understand. And I highly recommend his channel. So going over the parts I'm going to be using, of course, we've already talked about the AOS 5 frame. And since this frame is a minimalistic type design, I'm going to go with a minimalistic uh, component selection. Starting out with the Newbie Drone Infinity, I picked this because it happened to be on sale. It is a little spendy, but I like it because it's an all-in-one flight controller, including the ESC that's rated at 45 amps and... 55 amp continuous. It's 32 bit. Um, it's an F7. Uh, it uh, does have a connector here for a, a DJI air unit. I'm going to be repurposing an air unit that I have from another build. So that works out slick. And uh, another thing I like about this uh, flight controller uh, is that it has this heat sink that's sealed. It's a sealed design and uh, it should be a little weather resist resistant. So this build, I'm gonna be using a little bit of conformal coating and uh, hopefully this thing will, you know, if the weather turns uh, where you know, you're limping at home because of the, it's raining or something like that, starting to rain, I think uh, that it would be an advantage. And then also this heat sink is fairly large, it's aluminum, so it is lighter weight, but that's gonna dissipate a lot of heat. And uh, so hopefully that'll make the whole build a little more reliable. Uh, this will be my first build with uh, Tracer Receiver. I wanted to see what all the hype's about as far as latency. So hopefully I'll notice a difference, but I, I doubt it because I'm, you know, more of an average uh, pilot, but we'll see. And so I'm uh, happy to try that out. And um, as far as other components, these are just the uh, clear racing uh, LEDs. It's race wire with LEDs, essentially. And I like these because it makes it a lot easier to change out motors. And then you can see the quad in, uh, at dusk. Um, these are pretty bright LEDs. So I use those a lot. They don't weigh that much. And uh, that's it. So pretty simplistic, uh, minimalistic design. So let's uh, delve into the abbreviated build. Quickly going through the bottom half frame assembly. As you can see, there's these carbon fiber washers and all the standoffs are 15 millimeters. And uh, so don't forget to put those on. And then the center sandwich plate that locks the arms in place is right here. And you put the standoffs on top of there. And then on the rear, there is another sandwich plate uh, for the rear arms. Uh, this thing, uh, I definitely would wash it off with uh, alcohol. There was a lot of carbon fiber dust, at least uh, the frame I got. And uh, so you don't want that getting on the electronics as uh, carbon fiber is conductive. And 
uh, you won't have a good day. So definitely uh, rinse this off with alcohol. So I always recommend using just a touch of uh, blue Loctite. That just ensures that uh, with the motors vibrating and everything, that uh, it's not going to come loose. So um, not a lot, just uh, be pretty sparingly with it. And uh, then you won't have to worry about uh, screws falling off. All right, the motors are installed now with the race lead glued on with uh, the E6000 glue. Um, you can see I went ahead and soldered all the motor wires up. And instead of the 38 by uh, 35 millimeter uh, race leads, I went with the eight millimeter by 25 millimeter, just a little smaller, because uh, the, the arms here are uh, a little shorter. So I decided to go with the, the shorter leads. Next, I soldered on all the ESC wires here. I went from underneath because I think it's a little cleaner. And you know, I'm not gonna be changing this in the field. If I have a flight controller failure, um, I'm gonna use a different quad. And if I have a motor failure, that's why I put these on here. It's just easy to desolder the, the motors. But in general, um, I think this is a neater um, option versus on the top. Then as far as the low ESR capacitor, uh, when I soldered on the pigtail, uh, you can see you really want it to be as close as possible um, to the um, connection here for the pigtail um, to have the maximum effect. Um, be careful, uh, you really need to put some insulative uh, heat shrink tubing on here. As you can see, I did that. And then just to keep it stabilized, I used a little double-sided stick, sticky tape. But uh, yeah, it's uh, looking uh, pretty clean still. I finished soldering up the components, uh, the tracer receiver here, and then also uh, the ViFly uh, finder. It's the smaller, it's the mini version, which is just a smaller form factor. I think it weighs around 3.5 grams. I'll go ahead and show what the actual weight is above. Uh, so it's pretty lightweight. So I went ahead and picked that. And I highly recommend getting one of these uh, ViFly smoke stoppers. They work really well. They have the switches so you can turn on and off the power. And it just saves you um, a headache of finding a short after the fact and uh, protects your electronics. But I normally like uh, soldering all the components up outside of the quad frame. That way I can test it out to make sure the components are working so that when I install it, um, I know ahead of time. So, and really the last thing I do is uh, solder up the motor wires. That's how I typically do a, a build. Uh, so as far as the wiring diagram, I'll show it up above. But it's pretty, it's pretty simple. Let's see if I can get it into focus here. But as far as the um, the pin out here, this is ground. So I tied the receiver ground and the buzzer ground together, soldered that up. The next wire is five volts, which goes to your tracer receiver. The yellow wire here is uh, buzz minus. The red, the next wire over is uh, pad is uh, buzz plus. And then the yellow wire is uh, TX for the tracer receiver. It's actually on the um, flight controller side. This is the TX wire. And then the white wire is the RX wire going to the uh, tracer. I'll go again, I'll show you, uh, this is the wiring diagram for that. It's pretty straightforward. For completeness, I'll go ahead and show you the receiver side of the wiring. So this square pad right here is ground. Uh, the next pad is five volts. And then the um, wire right here, the white one that I have, is RX on the flight controller side, and then the yellow wire in the last pad here is TX on the flight controller. So uh, next I'm going to go ahead and install this flight controller and uh, then solder up the motor wires. Just showing you the standoffs here using the uh, metal screws that come with the um, Infinity flight controller and with a uh, plastic nut to hold it in place and that gives you some space. Moving on with the build. I printed out these TPU wire guides. It just makes the build much neater. You don't really need them but I like it because you can see 
it creates a nice little pocket for the uh, tracer receiver and then my Wi Fly uh, buzzer. And it just makes the uh, wires real nice and neat. I went ahead and soldered everything up. You wouldn't necessarily have to print these out, you could use tie wraps to do the same thing. Um, I just happen to like this and then I also have access as you can see to the um, Wi-Fi um, buzzer finder if I want to reset it there with a with a momentary switch or you can do it with the battery disconnecting the battery and then plugging it back in and then unplugging it um, so you can go through that sequence as well but I think it uh, turned out um, really clean so next what I'm gonna do is install the air unit itself and then we're Pretty close to having this build wrapped up. Finishing up the build, I got the air unit and camera installed, as well as the uh, plates. The uh, cable management, I went ahead and uh, tie wrapped the cable harness coming off the air unit. Um, just tie wrapped it to this uh, standoff here. Um, as far as antenna placement, I've done this before where I've just attached the um, air unit antenna. I get uh, really good reception doing it this way. It might not be quite as good as the 45 degree uh, TPU mount, but I find that to get in the way. And then also Chris Rosser uh, doesn't recommend that because you can introduce some vibration into the frame caused by the resonance frequency of something hanging off the end and uh, introducing another uh, harmonic uh, resonance frequency. So um, I've had good luck with this and uh, this is the recommended um, antenna placement for this particular build. So I went ahead and did it that way. As far as the air, air unit, I just used double-sided sticky tape and then attached it uh, with a little additional security with a tie wrap here. So uh, overall, the build um, was very clean and uh, also did some on the pigtail. I attached a tie wrap here. That way there's some strain release in case uh, we get a battery injection, a battery ejection. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, attach the top plate with some UMA grip to hold the battery in place. So the dry weight is 403 grams which I would consider to be a lightweight five inch build. You add a 6S battery. This happens to be a 1250 6S battery. You're coming in at 616 grams. And you add a session mount on there, 684. Then you add a session to that, um, 721. So still a fairly lightweight five inch build. I won't be running it with the session. Um, I think uh, for posting on YouTube, just having a um, air unit on there at 1080p is fine. And that's why I went with the air unit over the Vista. So next, I'm going to go ahead and um, tune this thing up. And that will be in the second part of the AOS 5 build. And with that, thanks for watching my channel.